Our go-to genre for movie nights is horror. There's something about watching beautiful teenagers in their late 20s make fatal mistakes that fills me with warm smugginess. Boy, everyone is stupid except me. Then I discovered horror video games. Is it someone new? You said this wasn't a spooky. And realized I don't like it as much when bad things are happening to me. Ah! <laughs> Case in point, I love my girl Sigourney in Alien, but when I put on the panties, I didn't make it 15 minutes without pooping them. Oh my god! <laughs> no thanks. However, Halloween is my favorite holiday, besides Christmas and my birthday, which is why I sucked it up, got tough, and made my boyfriend play a bunch of scary games for me. Hey, knock it off! There's a kid back there! <laughs> I'm in danger! Submitted for the approval of the Midnight Society, I call this episode Girlfriend Review's First Annual Halloween Top 3 Scariest Games to Watch Someone Else Play Spooktober Clickbait Special. This year, the challengers are Outlast, Until Dawn, and the very rare, very cancelled Silent Hills, more commonly known as PT. So turn off the lights, put the kids to bed, and tell your boss to kiss my butt, because this video is so disturbing. Oh, God! So shocking. Oh, God, someone pooped out a whole arm. <laughs> that we're probably going to get demonetized. It's spooky. Let us begin on a dark and stormy night in Outlast. We played as a journalist investigating reports of inhumane experiments being conducted at an insane asylum. And it's at this point in the story that I would have put the car in reverse, backed it all the way up to the title screen, clicked exit, uninstalled, and asked for a refund. But my boyfriend thought going into a dilapidated hospital in the middle of the night sounded fun. Oh, oh no. Mm -mm. So I settled for turning the lights back on and opening the curtains. We were playing with the lights off, but Shelby got scared, so she's opening the windows. She's so scared right now. I can literally see a poop in her pants. Oh, jeez. No, no, no. <laughs> Jump scares such as that are constant in Outlast and are the game's primary source of suspense. Oh, God. I usually don't like horror films that rely this much on jump scares because it's less that I'm scared and more that I don't like being yelled at. <laughs> I've learned that in video games, though, they're a lot more fun. Movies move forward no matter what. Video games only move forward if you can find the courage, and it produces a similar joy as playing Crocodile Dentist. I'm the Crocodile Dentist! Or Don't Wake Daddy. Will he wake up? Oh, God. Don't wake Daddy! The secondary source of suspense in Outlast is the thrill of being chased by an unstoppable force. Much like the victims of Michael Myers, Jason, and the Terminator, the player has no viable offense against their stalkers. The only option is to be sneaky, but if you hear the theme song from Batman Forever, it means time to go. Ah! <laughs> go, go, go! What? Oh, you what the f Let's go! I'm so freaking slow! Jump. Jump! I did it! Oh, mama! Oh. oh, Lord have mercy. Keep going, Babu! Let's get the heck out of here! Unfortunately, this gameplay mechanic starts to lose its effect and appeal when you realize the whole game is basically R-rated hide-and-seek, and the enemies are worse at it than five-year-olds. They almost never look in the correct locker you've shoved yourself into, then mosey on back to their predetermined path, leaving you more inconvenienced than afraid. You can't get me in here! Uh oh Oh, no! Ah! <laughs> He did. He got me in there. So, should your boyfriend play Outlast this Halloween? Yes. And on the brand new Girlfriend Reviews Spookometer, I give it three pooped panties out of five. A go home situation. The next game on our list is Until Dawn. Until Dawn is pure entertainment, and maybe the first time I had more fun watching than my boyfriend had playing. Is this? Gosh. This is just Scooby Doo. It's like a Metroidvania, only way better. Cause this one doesn't have anything fun, like platforming or combat. Yo, look at his teeth! I'm having a good time. <laughs> if you watched my last interactive movie review of Detroit Become Human, you know that I thought it was a beautiful, well-acted piece of garbage and a 10 out of 10 must-play experience I hated that has a little something for everyone. Oh my god. I didn't think quick time events were an appropriate medium for telling a story about civil rights that exploits domestic violence, racism, and the Holocaust to tell you how to feel, rather than exploit or the philosophical debates and ethical dilemmas that make artificial intelligence such a provocative and fun plot device. <sighs> In short, out of every developer I know, David Cage smells his own farts the most. <sighs> 
But I imagine that after Supermassive Games threw their hat into the interactive movie ring, they turned to him and said, You know what the difference is between you and me? I make this look good. This is it, folks. Backseat gaming date night perfection. It has that classic snuggle up with popcorn vibe that makes spooky movies so intimate. Only now when I yell, the actors have to listen to me because the actors are my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and when a dumb and horny teenager gets killed, it's not because they are dumb and horny, it's because my boyfriend is dumb and horny. Yeah. Oh! Coming, Jessica, I love you. Dilly dallying. I'll save you and we'll go back to the cabin and we'll bang, okay? But hold up a minute. This is a top three scariest games clickbait special, and unfortunately, Until Dawn just isn't very scary. Don't worry, I'll save the cheerleader. Oh no! For starters, there are collectibles scattered throughout the game called totems that are just straight up movie spoilers. These visions are intended to help the player survive future events, like that Nicolas Cage movie. You can see things before they happen. Only my future. However, giving the player godlike powers while spoiling the best part of horror, the deaths, really kills the suspense and breaks the immersion of being a sexy yet vulnerable slasher victim. Furthermore, a lot of the totems are mundane nonsense. If we don't do something, somebody's gonna watch a crow fly off of a bench. <laughs> and stressing about deciphering their meaning was more distracting than helpful, leading to frequent pausing during moments of high intensity. I do! Baby, who do you like before? Oh my god! Totems! What do I do? <laughs> so, should your boyfriend play Until Dawn this Halloween? Absolutely yes. But on the brand new Girlfriend Review Spookometer, I give it one peed panties out of five because I wet myself laughing. The last game I want to talk about today is the freaky love child of Guillermo del Toro and Hideo Kojima that was murdered by Konami in its infancy. All that remains of Silent Hills is the playable teaser, a ghost of the cancelled project which has been unavailable for download since 2015. To experience it now, one has to acquire a PlayStation 4 that it was never deleted from. So in a harrowing act of investigative gaming journalism, my boyfriend and I drove 45 minutes to meet with a collector of rare and ancient relics. The Completionist! How wonderful to meet in the flesh. You guys, Gerard let us borrow his personal PS4, so go say thank you. What is that thing there? I am boyfriend. PT takes place in a single ordinary hallway. You ever turn the lights off in the kitchen then speed walk through the dark to your room because maybe there's a boogeyman behind you? That's the exact tickle on your neck that PT creates within seconds without needing backstory, dangerous enemies, or threats of any kind. Instead, Kojima conjures an experience that we've all had at some point in our lives, being alone in a house at night and getting the willies. Hello? Then within minutes, the game taps into a second fear every player will recognize, having a nightmare. The end of the hallway is the beginning is the end ad infinitum, unless you can solve cryptic puzzles that bend reality a little more with each solution. Oh God, oh God! <laughs> making it scarier as you progress, like the only way to wake yourself up is out of fright. Oh. I yelled, I'm sorry. Oh my days. <laughs> Only you can't wake up because it's not a nightmare. It's worse. It's a game by Hideo Kojima. Hello, Kojima? I have one question. What the f***? Oh, it's a fetus. It's oh, it's a fetus. <laughs> this is an evil game. Oh, I can feel it right now. Oh. Even my boyfriend, who is a horror veteran, said the most terrifying thing he's ever had to do in a video game is simply turn around in PT. I don't want to. You have to look up. I want to leave. Go oh, there. stop. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, the puzzles become nauseatingly confusing, adding a physical layer of discomfort to the mix. Then, if you want to get the super secret ending that reveals the trailer for Silent Hills, you have to look up how to do it online because it's not so much a puzzle as it is a secret Illuminati handshake. In fact, here is some exclusive footage of Kojima himself explaining the process. Let's go like this. Spin around, stop. Double take three times. One, two, three. Then pelvic thrust! Woo! Woo! Stop on your right foot, don't forget it! So, should your boyfriend play PT this Halloween? No, it's the devil and I'm giving it five poop panties out of five. I don't even want this thing in my house anymore. The weirdest thing happened though when I tried to message the completionist.
Then we tried to return it to his offices, but when we got there, the place was empty. Until someone hears from him, I'm locking this thing in storage downstairs like Annabelle. Sounds like a, like a jet engine taking off.